ready and making sure that the stream is set up. But we're going to be having a quick conversation today about counter spells and about uh, how to pick them, when, which one should be picked when, and kind of doing the same thing I would normally do to prep for a, a draft. This is the you're going to be seeing it live. It's literally just the same thing that I normally am used to when I'm kind of getting ready and not really sure exactly what. Um, not exactly sure what I'm walking into, what I'm going to be drafting, but I want to have a good understanding of what the what the field, like, if I end up in a blue field, right, what do I want to do, which counters do I want to take first, and how do I, how do I decide what to, what to have there? Um, so that's, that's always a tough kind of question, and that's what we're going to be going through today, and just doing the same kind of prep that I would normally be doing. Let me adjust, let me just adjust this, uh, name placement there. There you go. That's my beautiful name. So making sure I'm actually live. There we go. Cool. Looks like everything is good and make sure the bots running properly here. Got to get all of the all of the pieces ready. Do do do. Let's hop in. And let's ask the bot, let's see the VRD one. Let's see if that's linking. Excellent. Seems like it's working fine. Cool. So yeah, feel free to ask Ninth Seed anything in the chat. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be kind of digging through some of the old VRD ones all the way um, all the way, all the way from the Northwest, uh, Vintage Rotisserie Drafts, all the way forward to kind of just get in mind what what I care about. So thing that I like to start with is just getting a blank spreadsheet, right? It's the most intimidating thing in the world, but it's also a good baseline for kind of just getting thoughts out on paper. Um, with that in mind, then, how do we how do we decide like what uh, which count which counter spells we want to actually start with? So Mandarin is a good one that I always like to throw on the list. Um, then I also get counter spells, so I just like start listing off the ones that I can think of um, because it's really easy. To, uh, to to just like get the first ones that you always are aware are going on there, but it's not so easy to get the ones that you forget about later on. So we're gonna get to those later. Um, but yeah, initially just like throw out everything you have on the list because then you'll have at least your top items. And yeah, you're gonna be a dunce and forget that you that you have 12 other things too. But you may as well get the get the ones that you can remember first. So. Force of Will, Force of Negation. I don't actually know where this card falls, um, but it is a certainly a pretty interesting one. It's a it's it's a really powerful card, I think, in combo decks. Um, but even in control decks, you can cast your threat and then pass the turn and use Force of Will to uh, to protect it. So so we're getting kind of through all the free counter spells. We've gotten the two uh, the two like best two mana counter spells here. Um, so then we can start getting into more of the free ones, so days, um, and we're not going to be throwing foil on this list, but I guess it probably does fall somewhere down here. So let's get foil listed. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with foil yet, but it's it's a bizarre card. Um, I guess it just got reprinted. That's kind of cool, but it's the cost is real steep. Being able to force to discard an island and another card um, is big. It's it's much bigger than force of will. You're throwing away three cards to counter a spell. Um, so kind of just like two mana bombs, uh, oh, two mana bombs, and free ones. So now we start like categorizing the things, right? Um, and we're like getting a rough order inside of these for what, what they actually have. Um, Situational one mana and in there we're gonna put things like mental misstep. Uh, we're gonna be putting in spell snare. Force spike makes this list. Um, even though we're mostly talking about blue, mana tithe is a totally reasonable card. We saw Vince pick it up in this last round and it was actually not terrible. 
um, but it is super situational. Uh, in this case, even more so because you were forced to be in white to be able to play it. Um, and then we kind of get like the bread and butter ones, right? These are uh, where we're going to put things like arcane denial. Uh, we're going to put things like mana leak, rune snag. I think they just printed a new rune snag. Um, let's see, counter target. I think it's quench. Let me see if it's quench the name of the card. Quench, yeah, this one. Counter target spell unless they pay two. So like both rune snag and that, literally in this format, will do always the same thing, but they aren't bad. So it's a good, it's a good first piece to have. Um, Okay, so now let's go and jump over here. And this is where we kind of have that fun part of just digging through old lists and seeing... Um, actually, let's go to the archives instead here. We're digging through the old lists and just seeing what things we're missing. So in this one, you can kind of see Paul Waite was on a blue-black reanimator in round one. Um, I'm actually going to start on the other side of this because we're going to be getting a lot more modern cards, um, which will, I think, be a little more useful for what we're talking about right now. Um, and I'm just working right off of this this doc. I'll link it in chat, but it's a it's literally just the VRD archives. We posted it on Twitter a while ago, um, and it's been pretty great. So let's get to chat a minute. There you go. And that should be publicly visible, but if not, uh, we can make it visible for you. So just let me know if you run into issues with it. Um, Okay, so in this one, Vince was definitely not in blue, so we don't have to worry about him at all. Coins was. Uh, here we see Force of Negation, Counterspell. Uh, let's see. What, anything else in here? Probe done, doesn't count. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah. Um, okay, so then we, we forgot about all of these. Uh, the, Reb, the Red Elemental Blast um, and Blue Elemental Blast and all of those. So let's get those on here. Um, in the color hosers category. Hosers? Eh, I know that's how you call it, talk to Canadians, but I'm not sure if that's actually how you spell hosers in this case, but whatever. Red elemental blast. Blue elemental blast. Pyro blast. And hydro blast. Now, a lot of these you just won't see unless burn is getting played, um, but... Um, like blue elemental blast and hydro blast are certainly on the ones that you'll just almost never see play. But I'm just going to stack rank these because they're real easy. Pyro blast is just almost always better than Rel red elemental blast because you can cast it even if you can cast it to get storm or something, even if you don't have a target for it. Um, but other than that, obviously the there are a lot more blue spells in this format than there are red ones. So the ones that counter blues are better. Um, let's see, he got days. Days is a insane pickup that it went 40 second there. That's just way too late. Okay, now let's see Elaine. Elaine's on that Grixis control list. We saw her do very well with. She ended up taking third place on Breakers. Um, but yeah, did incredibly well. So let's see. Um, none of these. Did she just run straight up counter, counter spell less? I don't see anything in here. I do definitely want to do one of these on Color Hosers because Dystopia was a pretty sweet pickup. Let's just toss that right in. In here, so y'all can see this one. This is a card that doesn't see a lot of play in most formats, and this is about the only one where you ever see anything at all. So, alright. Notion Thief. Divest. What does Divest do? Oh, okay, that's just a discard spell. This is also fun because you get to kind of like actually dig through lists and see what you get to see kind of different strategies, right? So in my head, I have just like all sorts of stuff running through that I would want, might want to do. So I think burn is like a very good potential um, that if I just had to pick right now, which for, what, what I think I would end up in, I think it's probably going to be burn. Um, but that's also one where you're very easily hated out. People start running hate cards for burn and you just, there's not a lot you can do. So Brent looks pretty counterspellless as well. Naveen was just straight black. I don't think he ended up, I know he splashed into another color. But, okay, he splashed into blue, but I don't think he actually ran any counter spells, if I remember correctly. Recurring Nightmare is another strategy that is just, like, right up my alley. I would love to run that. Um, okay, so Eric. Yeah, so we actually had a pretty small uh, pretty small number of counter spells around this time. 
miscalc. That's a really big one that I just missed, though, because miscalculation is a huge card. Let's get that in on the board here. But miscalculation is incredibly powerful. Um, it does all of the same things that these other two mana cards do, but I, but it's just strictly better than Rune Snag and Quench. We're going to drop into this two mana bombs, because being able to cycle is just a huge, huge game there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, he, did he mean, oh, Steel Sabotage is a good situational counterspell. So, Sabotage? How do you spell Sabotage? Sabotage? Steel Sab. Okay, Sabotage. Got it. Sabotage. Perfect. And... Let's see, anything else he got in here? He had the Pyroblast. Okay. Divert. Divert is kind of a uh, it's kind of a VRD all-star. It counters it changes the target, so it misdirects unless they pay two. Which is just like the definition of situational one mana. Um, as long as we're in this free, let's also throw a miscalculation in here. Calculation. There we go. But yeah, Divert is a card that I feel a deep amount of love for, but it's so dependent, right? If you're playing a kind of protect the queen strategy, um, where you are drafting a bunch of where you're drafting a bunch of creatures that they need to protect them, it can be really wonderful. If you are just countering people's spells and you're getting counter wars a lot, it can be very powerful. Uh, if you are just like playing creatures, not very good. Uh, so, spell pierce. I think spell pierce actually just drops out of the situational one mana cards into the bread and butter because that card is just always will find a home. It's costs one mana. It's really powerful. Um, you end up in good spots with it. Muddled Mixture is another one that um, very powerful. Uh, it doesn't counter creatures, but it counters all the things you really care about in this format. Uh, that's not true. It doesn't counter Planeswalkers or Enchantments. It doesn't counter a lot of things, but it is just very strong um, because you can always turn it into something else if you need to. So in the situational one mana, let's put Swan Song in here as well. Um, being able to counter counter a spell of an instant sorcery enchantment and then just give them a kind of meaningless bird is very strong. Uh, negate, of course we forgot Negate. It's like one of the most forgettable cards. I know it's fine, but it's just ugh, so uninspired. It's just really clean though. It, it's like a very well designed card. It's just never exciting when you cast it. Paying two mana just feels a little too bad for that. Memory Lapse, on the other hand, that's a spicy one that I really love. Don't know about that art. That art's fine, but we're, we're gonna get the get the classic art for that one. It's just too good. Shout out to Rebecca Guay. Do do do. Okay, so that one definitely falls in the bread and butter. All right, so then working our way back up here. Steven's list is the last one we have from this last time. I do think that we were pretty light on counter spells this last time. You're seeing all of these that we have here, but even with that in mind, there's still just so many other options. So we got that Swan Song. Um, let's see, anything else? Anything else he got? Mana Drain. Okay, so he got the the big one. I think Mana Drain's the best the best counter spell in this format. You can just do so much work with this. You like hit their oh, wrong art again. Come on now, let's get with this. Um, you hit their you hit their four drop of Jace the Mind Sculptor and you just crash back and cast a seven drop. Like, that's kind of insane. Or you just cast a couple mana rocks and then still have all of your counters up. It's just very powerful. All right, so we're jumping back to the STL VRD one. Um, gonna be a little, uh, gonna be a little faster on this one. We don't, we've already seen a lot of them. Um, this time you see there's a lot more hate pieces that got drafted, like Tsunami and Elephant Grass, and a lot of like hate pieces that got drafted late. But Alex was definitely not in counter spells. Uh, let's see. Dan was last time. So Dan was running this upheaval deck that was not very good, but he managed to do a pretty good job with it. It was it was impressive what he pulled out with that deck. Because I remember seeing it and I'm like, wow, this person is gonna have a rough time. Okay, Syncopate. That's a that's one we definitely missed. So these are one of the X counter spells. Uh, really strong. Um, they they let's see X counter spells. So these are really good, but they also just like it requires a lot more of an investment, right? Like 
two mana for a four spike is just straight up bad, and four mana to, for a mana leak is really bad. So like, yeah, you'll get people a lot, but you also kind of have to make a big investment into this. So these kind of X spells, I really like in decks that run things like Factor Fiction, um, where you kind of can do extra stuff with your mana if you can't use it all for that. Um, but as long as we're in here, let's grab Power Sync as well. Um, that's not the that's not the guy falling over confused about what's going on. Where's the ABU one? There we go. That's that's the art I know and love. Power sync. So you not only you not only force them to counter it unless they pay X, but you also tap them out, which is pretty strong. Um, this kind of gets into the what is a counter spell, right? Like mana short. I, I think you could argue can act as a counter spell, meaning that you can just like at the end of their turn force them to use all their mana or not have it. So for combo decks, I actually kind of like um, so. I like tap out cards, um, so this is where mana short falls in. Power sync kind of can do the same kind of thing. Uh, Giga Drows falls into this category. These are like not strictly counter spells, but if you're playing a combo deck or something that needs to have that wants people to, to play cards on your own turn and just force kind of counters for their counters, counters for their counters, that's where these tap out cards can fall in. And since we've been talking about counters for counters, let's get Flusterstorm in here. Recent addition to modern, but just really powerful all-around card. Um, if anyone in chat has any questions, feel free to throw them out as well. Um, I know we're just kind of doing these quick conversations, but still always happy to chat through this. Oh, let's jump back. Let's see. Arcane Denial we already hit. Yeah, so Vance last time went pretty deep. Um, we aren't uh, we aren't really in the realm of reusing stuff, but I'm gonna th I'm gonna throw it in here as well, kind of just reuse, which is like mission briefing, snapcaster mage, um, and specifically I want the instant speed versions of these, not not things like Yogmoth's will, but even though those are obviously very good, they're just even more situational and not something that we care about right now. Okay, so let's see anything else he had in here. Disallow, that's a new one. Disallow is very strong. Disallow is kind of in that three mana spot. These are the ones that you're never happy about having, but some of them are good enough that you can just like justify keeping around. So disallow, um, uh, disperse, no. Um, it starts with dis. There is disallow, not disarm. Discombobulate's way too slow. Ooh, disdainful stroke. We definitely, uh, we definitely should have in this. So Disdainful Stroke is counter anything and costs four or more, which is obviously very strong. Um, but there is a... Okay, dis okay so we're also going to have a four mana... Um, four mana counters where we're going to have things like Cryptic Command. I'm going to put Cryptic Command under... Ah, no, it, it is just in its own category. Cryptic Command, inside of the same one, Dismiss Falls. Crypt dismiss acts as the same, um, the same things you care about for Cryptic Command the vast majority of the time, but it's just very strong. Um, it's the modes that you almost always use. Dispel falls into situational one mana counters. Being able to counter their instant is always very strong. Um, there's things like Dispersal Shield that I just like. This is like so situational. More situational. This is, I'm going to put things like Dispersal Shield here. Disperse. No, not Disperse. Um, what's the... There's one that, like, counters it if it's... Uh, unified Will is the one I was thinking of. So, yeah, Unified Will. We already have Dispersal Shield. Um, okay, there's Disrupt. I'd never, I've never seen this card be played, but I could easily see it happen. Um, counter instant or sorcery unless they pay one and draw a card. 
So like very situational. Uh, in the free category though, of course, we can't forget about Disrupting Shoal. This card is not great, I think, um, but it's not horrible either. It kind of crosses that line between free and um, free and X spells, um, but it, it's X spell that uh, that has to be. You have to pay X for X as their spell, so you always will pay two more than they do if you're casting it fairly for a disrupting shoal. Um, not great, but in that same like spell blast and spell burst fall in the same thing. Burst with a T. All right, disrupting shoal. Where did this guy go? Oh, okay, and we're gonna have in here as well creatures because I'd forgotten all about Little Teferi, Disruptive Student. This card is a uh, this card is a card that you just don't see that often. Counter a spell unless they pay an additional one, so you can just straight up force spike something every turn, and it costs a lot. Yeah, here we go. These are the two cards I was talking about. Though dissipate, um, we're just counter it and exile it instead. This card is usually not good enough, but um, it can definitely make the cut occasionally if you really need to have it. Um, same thing with Dissolve. Not a good card. The Scry one just isn't isn't worth the cost of having to deal with it, but it is not horrible. Um, okay, so that, that hits those cards. Uh, okay, so... Let's get Unified Will up there, because that one's a weird enough one that we don't often see it. This card sees playing Modern Merfolk sometimes, but it's generally not quite good enough. Okay, let's get back over here. So Disallow, that's what started us off in that whole three mana counter spell chain. It kicked off a bunch of more distractions. Um, Dark Deal, Drop of Honey, Prohibit. Prohibit's a good one. Also recently got added to Modern. Um, so Prohibit's definitely like just a solid two mana counter spell. So this is definitely falls on the bread and butter. And my, my kind of plan here is to get things into categories, organize the categories, and then um, make sure, and then like maybe if we have time, get to an overall stack ranked list. But that stack ranked list is almost never very useful. Um, usually it's kind of like, okay, let's look across the top items right here. Which of these are, um, which of these are just definitely ready and need to be happen? Sorry, it looks like I cut off this part of this. This one right here, so let's add some space. There we go. And give a little more space back. Come on, get a cryptic command at space. It needs a lot of it. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, it, it's hard to uh, it's hard to not nab something with a prohibit though. So prohibit cryptic, pyroblast. You can see here that it looks like Naveen was just drafting all of the counter spells at the end there. Um, Venser certainly falls into this category. Um, he's able to counter a spell back to their hand, as long as we're talking about that. I put Remand in this uh, two mana bomb category. It's just so strong. And like something like Spell Pierce might be better than Remand, um, but Remand and Arcane Din or Remand and uh, and Memory Lapse are both just such strong cards that they give you a massive tempo swing. I generally think drawing a card of your own is better than putting a card back on top of your opponent's library, especially in these kind of decks. But it is uh, that some people might switch these two around, but I think it definitely falls in that two mana bomb. Mystic Confluence is a new is a new hotness that uh, that really should get some mention. And by new, I mean like I don't know when it, it's already been reprinted, so it can't be that new. It looks like 2015, so yeah, relatively new, <laughs> um, but certainly not not regularly there. Um, so Mystic Confluence, there's also one that just got reprinted, or got printed for the first time. This one actually was re actually reprinted, or actually was just printed. Archmage's Charm. This is a three mana counter that definitely can make the cut. It, uh, it has just so much versatility, like countering, being a divination, stealing their soul ring. Like, all of these cards seem great. Um, for three mana, triple blue means that you're very much locked in if you want to play it but it can be very strong. Let's see, Miskelk. Yeah, Naveen's deck was sweet. He ended up winning out the whole thing. The 6-1. He only he only won, I believe. He only lost, I'm sorry, to, I think, Vince. Because I think it was, he lost to um, Vince, who went 2-5 last time. 
it was really an amazing run. Um, okay, let's see. Elaine was just on Hate Bears. I was just on Discard. I was kind of on a Jund thing. I made a bad decision right here where I decided to splash into red for no reason. I was just like, oh, there's dual lands open. But I just wasted like one, two, three. I know this is not what we're talking about today, but I'm still salty about it. I wasted one, two, three, four, four picks, five picks. Uh, no, just four picks. Four picks on something that's just completely useless. And it could have been sweet side work cards instead. Um, Jeff was on mono black. No, he was also on blue because um, he took this divert mystical tutor. Okay, so Jeff was on blue black reanimator. Uh, recoil. What does recoil do? That's the bounce and they discard a card, right? Yeah, okay. Not a counter spell. It can kind of feel like one sometimes because you just nab or kill their creature with it, but not technically that category. Spell stutter sprite, however, spell stutter sprite definitely falls in that category. Um, there's also the, um, there's that legendary creature. What is this guy called? He was a legendary creature that can counter spells. Counter spell. It's a legendary creature. I know he, like, went evil and became blue-black later on. I'm going to be very embarrassed about not knowing who this guy is. He was a huge story character. Way back in the day. Airtai. Airtai Wizard Adept. This guy counts costs four mana to counter a spell each time, but once you have them in play, it becomes very hard for them to actually manage to do anything. Uh, it's certainly not going to be at the top of this list. Even something like Disruptive Student, I think, is far better. But Airtai certainly deserves a mention. Let's see, Days we already got. Days is just so good. Let's let's move move Days over to this uh, to this bomb category. We're actually just going to rename this. Because Days is just so good. Ah, I guess it's in the it's in the free category. That's probably more accurate anyway. Okay, we got Mana Leak. Rewind. Rewind is I don't think very good, but some people love it. Um, it, I mean, Rewind does let you cast it and then cast something else. Um, and as long as we're talking about that one, there's a three mana version that just that just I keep saying just got reprinted. I have no idea when things got printed. Uh, three mana rewind. What was this thing called? Um, and it's like an it's a negate that basically is a three mana free negate. Unwind. That's the guy. This card deserves a mention. Uh, I don't think it's it's both situational and expensive, and not incredibly powerful. So I I definitely don't think it falls into my top tier, but it is worth mentioning at least. I'm going to just drop it over here. Um, because it's... it, I can imagine a scenario where I want it, and that's what we're trying to do here, right? We're not trying to build just list the best counter spells. We're trying to build uh, a list of all of the counter spells that we could possibly want, and then we can kind of run down the list when we're in that tight spot in 40th, 40th pick, and everyone else is just picking instantly. And you're like, "What do I take? I need something right now. Uh, what do I take?" Like that's that's what we're doing right now is having that compiling that list that we can have sitting in front of us when that happens. This card's sick. It's a pyroblast that slow trips. Um, just very strong. It does cost two, but still. Uh, so burnout, and as long as we're in there, we're going to do guttural response. Guttural? Is that how you spell this card? Yeah, guttural response. Counter target blue instant. It costs one mana. It's red or green. It's just, like, really strong. Okay, is it charm? So the charms are tricky. Um, is it charm? I think definitely makes a cut, because it's just, like, a good card. But I think that there's a lot of, like... There's a lot of these that, that are just not going to even make the cut. So this one is a charm I think falls under bread and butter, but something like Demir Charm, like I don't even want to list this on here. It's just taking up space. No one ever wants to do sorcery spells. If you do, there's like two better ones. So let's let's actually find those two better ones. We list those instead. Uh, counter target sorcery. There's the new one that like, I don't think it actually even matters which one of those we use. Okay, Calculated Dismissal is a three mana mana leak. We don't care about that one. Curse Catcher, however, that one should have been put on this list. 
Disciple of the Ring costs 5 mana. That's just a lot. Um, Envelop. Envelop is, uh, is the old one from Judgment that lets you just counter a sorcery. Similarly, Extinguish and Flash Counter. These let you counter a sorcery and instant, respectively. Uh, so these go even more situational. Let's see, Flusterstorm we got... Insidious Will. I've never seen this card before. Counter target spell. You can choose new targets. And copy. Okay, so you, okay, so you either copy, or you can misdirect, or you can counter. Um, that seems really expensive for what you get. I'm not going to bother listing that one. We'll see. Somebody's going to beat me with it, and then I'll feel embarrassed. But for right now, it's not even worth having a list. All right, Invasive Surgery. Um... Let you look at their hand. That's the only advantage. But it is probably it is strictly better than envelop, I guess. So if you have delirium, it lets you look at their hand, which is not nothing, I guess. But uh, mausoleum wanderer, though, that one we can have in here. That guy's very strong. Um, essentially, let you sack it to force spike, uh, to force spike an instant or sorcery. So not bad. Uh, we already got Muddle the Mixture on here, hopefully. Yep, that's in the bread and butter. Good. Okay, so Remove Soul are some of these bread and butter ones. So we have Remove Soul, um, and we also have the reprint of Remove Soul. Uh, what are these cards called? Maybe it'll be here if we keep going. But Cards like this that say, like, counter target spell if it counters you, is just so bad. I don't know. Like, they... They're good against burn. I guess we... This is where I'm just like, at what point do you just start filling up the list with cards that are garbage? And like... I don't know. This one might be good enough. Let's list it. It's just like so situational. But we have this more situational category that's literally designed for this. So. Alright, so Psychic Rebuttal. Um, let's see... Stratus Dancer definitely makes this cut. So Stratus Dancer is a morph that flips out to counter. I think it'd be sweet to just go through, like, what are all the playable morphs? That's a deck that I think could actually be, like, very strong. Um, because, like, if you have two, people already have to play around it very differently. The problem is just there aren't that many, like, playably powerful morphs. Warping Whale, though, I think this one... This one is kind of in that situational category, but it also has... Other things that are mildly useful, we'll put it down here. I'm not happy about this card if I have to play it, but it can certainly see play. In pro I mean, I don't think I could ever imagine playing it in a non-blue deck. But um, okay, so now let's come up with the spells that say counter, um, counter target spell that targets you. And we don't care about sorcery anymore. The Scryfall syntax is just like so beautiful. Okay, so Absorb and um, what's the, I forget the counter side of Absorb, but the one that makes them lose life are both definitely playable if you're in those colors. So Absorb and, oh man, counter target spell lose three life. What is that card called? Let's see. Counter spell lose three life. It's like undermine. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna throw it up here for you a minute. Yeah, undermine is just very strong. It can go really well in that kind of like discard their hand rack style control deck, or even just any kind of Grixis deck. I think Elaine could have used this card um, for a pretty good effect. Oh, hey there, Otto. Sorry, I completely I forget, for, completely missed your chat there. My bad. I'll keep the chat a little closer. And yes, Essence Scatter is exactly the card I was thinking of. Um, Forbid is definitely worth thinking of. I think I have it on the list, but let's see. Thanks for joining me tonight. Yeah, Forbid's in the three mana counter slot there. I pro You probably said it a while ago, and I just completely missed it. Uh, two blue blue for a 1-1 one, one tap to counter a spell, I think. Yeah, 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 that's Airtie. He is very good. 
Um, and essence scatter, you're right. Let's put that under remove soul here. Okay. So let's go back to this list. Uh, I was just like trying to find those. There's like two good cards that say counter spells that target you. And um, let's see. Let's see if we can find it. I'm not going to stress out too much about this. I think that the whatever this card with Jace doing cool things on it, Psychic Rebuttal, might be the best one. Um, counter target spell that targets you. Let's see if that's a thing. Okay, Hindering Charm is the other one that I want to have in the list. Because that card can definitely see play. Um, and then Dawn Charm. Like, it's kind of nice just to have all of the, the cards that are non-blue that are in that list. Um, it's just... It's unlikely that you're going to want them, but if you happen to be one of those decks, you might want something like Withering Boon. Um, Withering Boon is not particularly good, right? It's a remove soul that costs you three life. Um, I almost feel like we might want to have a category here for, like, non-blue. Where we drop things like Burnout, Guttural Response. Um, the Color Hosers get dropped all of them down here. And actually, let's move the Hydro Blast and Blow Elemental Blast up the Situational. Alright, we got Dawn Charm. And yeah, like, th some of these cards are base blue and they require something else. Um, but I've already forgotten what Extinguish does. There's the other black, uh, the black one that's like Counterspell unless they lose half their life. But, I don't know. I think we'll get to that if we keep digging through the list. So, um, I'm just going to get, just let's keep digging through this, the archives, and see if we can find anything else in here that looks interesting. Something like Counterbalance is always interesting, too. Like, that's a card that um, that you could argue is a counterspell or not, but I don't know. I don't think it's particularly needed to list. Okay, so in VRD8, I remember there being a ton of counterspells here, so I think there was a big run on them early, and this one will be very helpful to track down. So let's see. And in case you're just joining, I'm just, like, going through, kind of, I am in a... If I were prepping for the next VRD, what would I want to do? And one of those things is to get a list of all the counter spells in case I end up in a blue deck. That I want to, I want to be aware of what, um, of what I would want to do. So that way, when you're at like pick forty and the clock is rushing on you, you need to be aware of like, okay, which of these counter spells are people forgetting? Which ones are missing? And then you can be like, oh look, just like in this last one that happened, days got taken forty second. And that card is way too good to be taken 40 second. So having this list in front of you to be like, okay, let's run through all of our top picks and make sure that we're not missing something there. Because that's, if, if you're in blue, you're going to want these cards. All right, so Randy um, is also in blue, of course, because it's Randy. Looks like he dug into the, uh, he went into the same strategy that Dan went in um, of doing Infect. Man, Seed Time is such a sweet card. This is a digression, but this card is ooh, so good in this format. Because everybody plays blue already, so you just get to, like, like literally just time walk somebody. It's so strong. Um, let's see. So, Otto, are you, uh, are you, do you do VRD? Have you been following this format for a while, or are you just checking in right now? Stifle is incredibly strong. That's a situational one for sure, but... Both Stifles, I think. We already got Disallow, but for some reason I forgot Stifle. This card's definitely strong and worth playing whenever you can. Alright, let's see. What else do we got in here? Counterbalance. Okay. And Jesse Hampton, who's one of the founders of the VRD. The Northwest VRD, at least. I don't, I don't know of anybody that did one of these before this. Um, so... I give them full credit for creating this format, because I think it's pretty sweet. And I'm glad somebody taught me about it, and they were the ones that did it. So, Alright, Memory Lapse, Force Spike Prohibit we already got. Gainsay. Gainsay is super situational, but we'll put it on the list, I guess. Um, it's not one that I really want. You know, let's just... Gainsay goes here. Eh, okay, let's let's keep the color hosers where they were, I guess. 
I don't know. I keep changing around where these where these pieces go. But Gainsay, and then it's like Jace's Triumph. Is that the card? There's like some Jace's something. That's a Gainsay. All right, let's just research Jace's. There are 12 cards that say Jace's. Okay, Jace's Defeat is the one I was thinking of. Which is just Gainsay, and if you have a Jace, you scry two. I guess Nicol Bolas doesn't like Jace all that much. Do they have other sweet Jace cards? This is a card I could definitely see building a deck around. Like this and Brawl, and I'm sure there's other ones like Mizzix or something. Just do a blue-red spells list. I could see that happening. Alright, you're a longtime fan of VRD, but you haven't had a chance to play it yet. Oh, good. I'm glad that you're enjoying the streams. If you're ever in St. Louis, we can uh, we can try to line up your trip so you can get there. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I'm super happy with this format. It's definitely, it's my favorite format, and I think it's the most skill-intensive format of anything I've ever played. Um, and this is obviously super biased, but um, I I feel like having the kind of open draft and just the deep knowledge you need to have of the format makes it incredibly difficult to play. So I, I really love it. Um, and like, the actual gameplay themselves has a little more swing to it than even Vintage does, but... I think it's great. Um, okay, so digging more through this list. Um, Deprive. Okay, Deprive is one that is really strong. Um, it's in that same, like, counterspell-ish category. Uh, Deprive, let's get it up on the little screen here a minute. Nope, that's a Stifle, which is still great, but not the card we're talking about. Yeah, so Deprive is just counterspell where you bounce a land. Like, bouncing a land sucks, but in the late game it doesn't matter at all because you have all the land you need. And in the early game you probably won't cast it unless you need to to stay alive. So it's just like an incredibly powerful spell that doesn't scale down. A lot of these counter spells like Prohibit or... Um, Prohibit is a bad example actually, but Mana Leak and Quench and Rune Snag and all these cards are just like not, not things that you can really use all that effectively in the late game. Cards like Deprive just never get worse. They just constantly improve as the game goes. Alright, so Marshall drafted his blue-black creatures list. And Sig was sweet there. Counter Squall is a great pickup, though. We forgot about Counter Squall. This one, uh... This one, a little situational. It's kind of in that negate category. I guess, sure. We've been putting those over here. Yeah, countering instants and sorceries are very good. It does require you to be both blue and black, but usually if you're in blue, you're probably splashing into either red or black. I guess if you're in... Um, there's a lot of times where you're just blue-green as well. Really, all, you can be blue plus anything, but it's useful to have all of those on these lists because you never know what colors you're going to be in until you actually get there. Something like Arreo, could, you could see arguing as a counter spell. I think that's too far for me, though. <laughs> That requires a very specialized deck to make a Rayo turn into a counter spell. And at that point, there's like that Jace and other things to do the same thing. Okay, so yeah, that hit VRD 8. I think we're just going to go back to like VRD 7. Let's let's do this as our last one. Because at this point, we start hitting a lot of things that are the same. We've already, we're have already dealing with a lot of the same players. There's not going to be a ton of new cards thrown in here. Certainly possible. Oh man, Corbett always typing in all caps. Why well, you got to be like that, Corbett? Um, drafted envelop a null. A null's a good one though. See, he would have missed a null. A null is very strong. Um, being able to counter enchantments is surprisingly relevant. It's not something that comes up all that often, but it can be very strong. Orem's chant and silence. I'm not going to have in this list because I think that they fall into the. Eh, okay, maybe 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 there's a category for it already. There's reuse, there's tap-out cards. Alright, we're going to put Silence and Orem's Chant in here. Just being able to let you go off on your combo turn is big. So, like, if at the point that I realize I'm in a combo deck, I just, like, pull up Tess and just, like, start digging through um, do, digging through some of the old Tess lists and Doomsday lists and just see, like, what am I missing? What stuff is there that people use to do broken things? Miskilk, Spell Snare. Spell Snare went very early. Round 7 is very early. I mean, it's a good card, but I don't know. The Northwest VRD is definitely hotter on Counterspells than the St. Louis one is. St. Louis is kind of 
doing broken two-card Monty things, and the Northwest had a lot more focused plans and a lot more control. So it's definitely interesting to see kind of the regional the regional differences there. Um, let's see. Justin was on that list. Okay. Remand, Managerain, Negate, Steel Sabotage. Okay, these are all cards that we already have listed. Anything in here we're missing? Okay, the other ones you've been thinking. Oh, good. Dovin's Veto. Good call with that one. I straight up missed Dovin's Veto. That card is great. Okay, let's see. Soul Manipulation. Is that the uh, the three mana one that, that like, uh, regrows a creature? Yeah, okay. So, the fact that it only counters a creature makes me n almost never want to play this card. But I can see, I can see wanting to have this on the list. Um, if you are in, like, Elaine's list from last time, that Grixis control, it can definitely be in there. Delay is sick. Delay is very, very good. So Withering Boon I do have on here, I believe, under the non-blue. Wait, maybe? Withering? Oh, did I... Uh, I might have only gotten the other one. Let's see. Wait, Remove Soul, what are you doing down here? Remove Soul should be up there. Huh. I thought I had Withering Boon. I must have overwritten it by copy-pasting. Sorry about that. But yeah, uh, Delay is very, very strong. I think Delay kind of falls into this bomb category for me. Because it just, like... Let's get... Yeah, Delay is incredibly strong. It counters their 2-drop and then lets you deal with it, like, on turn 5. And, I mean, it'll still be relevant, but it's just, like... Eh, maybe it's not quite good enough to be up here. But it's definitely, like, in the bread and butter category. So, do you know, what is the other black counter spell? There's one that's, like, not not another void, but there's a black counter target spell that is not good. <laughs> counter spell that is black. And it's going to give us, like, all of the black counter spells that are also blue. Whoa, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. But we'll dig through the list. Death grip, counter target green spell. Okay, we're not, we're not going that deep. Um, but I do want to get the other one that's actually just an instant or sorcery that counters this. There's an instant, of course, that counters a spell. Withering Boon. Huh. It's a black instant, I thought. I thought it was counter. Dash Hopes. Okay, yeah, Dash Hopes is very bad. Um, but we should probably have it on this list. If you're like in a red black burn deck, this card can certainly make the cut. But yeah, good call on the withering boon. I don't know how I lost it on the list. Okay, so let's finish up here and then we can get to um, get to the rest of actually like doing some organization here. Okay, so we had Elliot Wu, right? Elliot won on that on this sweet um, the sweet Kiki Kiki Jiki list. This is another one that I think has been disappointing that we haven't had show up in the St. Louis Vintage History Draft yet. It's just really strong. I, I get pushed off blue too easily. It's like one of my failings that I just need to stay on blue if even if other people are in it. It's just, I hate being the fifth blue drafter. It feels really bad. But yeah, once you're in like blue and red, you can suddenly be running red, ele red elemental blast and all sorts of other things. Let's see, Giga Draws we got. Um, anything else in here? Misdirection? Misdirection is sorely undrafted far too often, because that card's insane. Let's see. Death Grip is definitely a good, a good card. Oh, don't get me wrong. Death Grip is great. Um, it's just kind of like, is Death Grip a counterspell? I don't know. Um, it's... Alright, we, we can put it down here, but I'm... I feel like it's kind of a... It's a tricky one to try to claim as a counterspell. But yeah, I, I definitely, another another one of these, like, counter spells is one section. I also like to have a section for, like, color hosers, and just have, like, each of the colors, and here are the top color hosers for those colors, and you can get it just, like, Tsunami, Blood Moon, like, you can kind of figure out, here are all the stacks pieces that you might want to have, and having those listed out is super helpful. Um, man, Flash Hulk, that was a sweet deck, and it's a shame that Nate only went 1-6 and six with it, because that deck was amazing. He just went very deep, right? When you're playing Calling the Week, you're having a rough day. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I don't want to, like, just... just it would be incredibly boring to just, like, watch digging through Scryfall. 
because that's what it would turn into if I'm just like counter spell and just start digging through all of those. Um, but that's like that is a thing that you should probably do if you want to if you know that you want to end up in a blue deck. In my case, it's like I'm okay if I miss that one sweet card that costs five mana, but is just really good um, because like like there's that one that like makes two clues or something. Counter spell clue. <laughs> it like is a five mana counter spell that makes clue tokens. Um, oh right, I have to go to advanced search. But like this is the kind of stuff that like I is just be incredibly boring for anybody else to watch. So I I would hate to force people to do that. Um, but yeah, if, if I knew for sure, I'm like I'm gonna be in blue and I'm gonna be drafting a big blue control deck that will take mana drain second round. Then I'd be like, okay, this is where. I start digging through and finding this counter spell that gives me clues for five mana. Um, no, it's it's not ice cave. That's incorrect. I think it's clues, right? Counter clue token. Um, I like distinctly remember a f a five mana counter spell that people thought was going to be playable. That was just not good. Oh, maybe it was Spell Swindle. So this card says counter a spell and then make and then make the treasure tokens equal to that. So it's mana drain that makes color tokens. Um, but in that same this did trigger this part, which is pretty useful. Mystic Snake is real good. Mystic Snake should be on our list of creatures. Because if you're in black if you're in blue green, you definitely want this card. There's also the new Mystic Snake. Enters the battlefield. Counter target spell. I don't remember the name of this one, but there's a new one that's like blue, blue, green, green. And is very solid. Um, let's see. So Draining Welk. The Steven's going to be on on Wednesday for an interesting conversation. He thinks that um, this format is a lot like EDH. And his his methodology for how to draft is to play it like it's an EDH format, which I can't fault him. I think that's an interesting idea, but I can't imagine playing a six mana counter spell is something that he would get on board with. Um, Willowmog's Nullifier, this card I could see theoretically seeing play, but I don't think that one's that one's probably not good enough to stick around. It's cost four mana, just like that's a lot of mana. Okay. So I think this is a good this is a good starting list. Um, so I've we've already kind of just been like by nature of thinking of the cards we like, deciding what the stack rank of these is. But like Cryptic Command, I think is just better than Dismiss. I mean, it, it has to be better than Dismiss. It costs an extra blue, but it has so many has other modes on it. So let's see if we pull up Cryptic Command, is it going to pull up the the prettiest version? No. Okay, it's going to pull up this version, uh, which is probably more useful than showing you. Uh, showing you this version. This version is also sweet, and this is the version I like to play with, but it's not particularly helpful for teaching people about the cards. Uh, but no, I think Cryptic is really solid. Um, top tier card for sure. Uh, I think that then Mystic Confluence probably does beat out Dismiss. Um, just because having the having all the versatility is is better than having the straight hard counter, right? This format is fast enough that people are not going to be able to leave up seven mana, um, or leave up six mana. So, like, worst case scenario, Mystic Confluence is the same thing as Dismiss. Um, oh, we did miss that three mana counter spell that, uh, the three mana counter spell that counters a creature and draws a card. I think it just got printed into modern. Counter target creature spell draw and it has to ferry like blowing away a whatever is card blowing away a um a Phyrexian negator on it. Exclude. Exclude is the card that we that's very good. And we're gonna move both of these cards over here as well. Because creatures are good, but not every deck plays creatures, so they're still situational. Alright, exclude is good. Um anything else we for sure missed? Ojitai's command? Okay, that one's one we can put in here. I'm not going to put Slumgar's Command, because that card is just way too slow. But Ojedi's Command has enough um, enough use in it that I think you could actually argue this card could see play. It is straight up a remove soul draw card, but it has like, it can regrow. Um, it can regrow two drops, so you can get back your Jace. Um, 
Jace the Creature. Uh, it's probably not very good. I think it's straight up worse than Rewind. But I kind of like this ordering here. Um, if you have to play a 4 mana counter spell, any of these will not be embarrassing to you to play. Um, there was one more in here that piqued my interest, which is Confound. This card is super situational, but I could imagine a situation where it'd be good. Confound. Did I spell that correctly? Yes, good. Um, definitely not a great card, but it does counter spe counters kill spell and draws a card, so card advantage is always good. So I can definitely see keeping that one around. Okay, so situational cards. These are super hard to rank because they're situational, but I think that having something like maybe ranking these in terms of straight power level, right? So Flusterstorm uh, and Flusterstorm Dispel are both incredibly strong. I think that probably Force Spike, just by nature of how versatile it is, makes the top list. A mental Misstep is not nearly as good as something like Spell Snare. So let's get both of these down, get Spell Snare in the middle here. And I'm just kind of like going completely off my own opinions. Other people can have this list in a very different order than I would. But I, I think that like, I want to Spell Snare over a Swan Song, but, and this is also, <laughs> this is also just like me talking generically, right? If I'm in a blue control deck, this is the th truth. If I'm in a, if I'm playing Storm Combo, I for sure want Swan Song over Spell Snare every single time. But it's hard. It's hard to kind of build this generic list without knowing. Okay, so Divert is the one that changes the target. Disrupt is the one that counters it unless they pay one. Yeah, Instant or Sorcery unless they pay one. This card's very bad. So that one's going to go down. Divert is fine. Definitely worse than... Definitely worse than something like Mental Misstep, even. Steel Sabotage is very good. Um, but I don't think it falls into this same category as Dispel. So I'm kind of like putting these into tiers and figuring out where this stuff goes. Mana Tithe is fine. Um, Force Spike is way too high on this list. Let's get this down here. Honestly, I think Dispel is probably better than Force Spike. All right, Invasive Surgery and Envelop are both not very good. So let's get those down here. They're probably, I think I'd rather have a Mana Tithe or Seal Sabotage than those. Um, let's see. I'm pretty confident the Fluster Storm is the best of these situational cards. Stifle? Stifle is probably not as good as Force Spike. Um, Stifle is really good. It's just kind of it's super situational, right? Like, you need to... You, it can counter a fetch land. Um, so if you're, like, in a Rug rug Delver running Tarmogoyfs and kind of fast be done lands, Nimble Mongeese, I can see it being fine. But, I don't know. It just... It's difficult to be able to pull off. Okay, a Null... A Null is good. I mean, a Null is, I think, up there with Dispel. Exclude, Remove, Soul, and Essence Scatter. These are, these are like, on the borderline between Situational and Bread and Butter. They're just... They're good. Um, they're very good. They will hit something in 70% of the matches. Like, let's, let's jump over here, and actually... Let's back us up with some data before I just, like, keep saying everything is generically good. But, like, in this one, it would obviously be insane against Vince. It hits 80% of his deck. Uh, against Coins, it only has, like three targets through four targets so you probably play one of them against him uh, against elaine it's very good she has lots of nickel bolas and um yeah she has counter she has a she does have a lot of walkers but she also ha does have a lot of creatures that she's ends up closing the game out with against brent uh he he has almost nothing um but he's going for a very different deck right he's a paradoxical outcome Light Steel Colossus type deck, and it didn't come together very well for him either. Naveen, it has some targets, but not a ton. It has enough, though, I think, that you'd want one or two. Against Eric and Steven, it is... Against Steven, it's very bad. He has, like, two targets. Against Eric, it has, like, three targets. And against Dan, it's very good. Right, it hits his creatures. Um, sorry, not talking about Stifle. We're talking about Remove Soul at this point. So... I don't know, it's it's tough to say where these cards fall, um, because they are super situational, but they're also good in the situations they're good in. So I think that, like, of these, I'd probably want to exclude the highest. Um, Steel Sabotage, I think, beats out Stifle. Uh, and then, I guess we get into Remove Soul, Essence, Scatter, Territory. Then Manatithe. Um, 
these three. Disrupt is really bad. We're going to move that one even lower. I think I'd rather have these two than Disrupt, and Stifle can be here. See, that's kind of like a rough stack rank. Bombs, these are cards that, if they are not taken in the first 10 rounds, I just must take. So Mana Drain's up there. I think Miscalc is actually better than Counterspell, and that people might disagree with, but being able to cycle your card is very important, and two is a lot of mana, so like unless they're playing two turns behind, or it's a very late game. And if it's a late game, you just cycle it and find something better. Free counter spells. Force of Will should be in the first ten rounds. Force of Negation is a tricky one. I don't know where this card falls exactly, but I imagine it's probably up here as well. Pact of Negation. Um, Pact of Negation stays up here as well. Let's see. Foil, not nearly as good. Miscalculation is not a free counter spell. Get out of here. Disrupting Shoal is better than Foil for sure. Um, I think Pact of Negation is not as good as Days. I don't know. This is just like totally my opinion, right? Um, Disrupting Shoal is better than Foil. But yeah, th these are kind of the, the rough rank of where I'd put these free cards. Um, Force of Wills. Force of Negation it doesn't cost a life, but besides that, in every way, it's worse than Force of Will. Being able to counter their creature, being able to counter just anything that they throw down at any point in the game, even on turn one. Like, they, those Black Lotus starts, you need something to deal with them. And yeah, there's only one deck in the field that has it, but Force of Will is the card you want against those. Okay, bread and butter. Let's start spreading this one out, because these are going to be hard. The best card in this list, let's see. Mana Leak is, I think, undervalued. It, it just, two is a lot of mana, which is why miscalculation is good, but three is so much more. It's almost impossible to deal with. Memory Lapse, though, I think is even better. It it's very close to Remand. I think Remand and Memory Lapse are both right about the same ballpark, forcing them to recast you do all their mana again, and you only had to use two, and making them waste their draw step to get it back is also very strong. Man, props to Otto for this Dovin's Veto and Delay. Those were both very good cards that I just completely blanked on. Prohibit, I think, does jump up here as well. Prohibit is... Uh, I, this card has to see play in Modern. This card, I, I I mean, we'll see when Alex Blackard talks about this card, but he does a podcast on um, blue-white control that is called... I don't remember the name of his podcast. He's going to be mad at me. But he's based out of St. Louis as well, does work for Moonbase Market, and he does a podcast uh, on Control Freaks, I think is what it's called. Let's see if we can find it. Control Freaks uh, Podcast. Nope, nope, sure, that, that's not it. Um, magic? The Gathering. Is this you? Yeah, this is him, Control Freak. So this podcast is interesting. If you if you want to play Blue Eye Control, I don't play it, I play Storm. But if you play Modern and play Blue Eye Control, he goes super deep, right? There's an entire episode about Hogak. Um, he had an entire episode about the matchup versus burn. It's like an hour long conversation about specific matchups when you're playing blue white. So if that's your bag, this is a cool podcast, but I want to hear what his thoughts are on prohibit. Cause this card seems very strong to me. Um, being able to just hard counter a two drop seems very good. All right. So as long as we're in that realm, let's get these up here. Um, the next thing I, th I think I'll put muddle the mixture up here. It, the versatility of being able to just tutor for something is worth the, um, is worth the downside of only countering instant sorceries, but strict fast on its heels. Um, I think Dovin's Veto gets up there, and then Negate, because both of these cards are very similar to each other. Um, but being able to be uncounterable is super strong. Uh, uh, what am I talking about? Somehow I missed the big boy. We got delay that needs to be up here as well. That card I was talking about putting up in this bombs category because I was so upset at myself for forgetting it. Oh, I also missed Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce is just, like, far and away. Costing one mana is such a big deal, right? Like, there's a reason Dispel is up here, even though it can only counter instants, instance, and that's it. <laughs> um, so Spell Pierce has that ability to interact for one mana. That's just incredibly difficult. Um, this format, although it, people don't win on turn three or four, being able to interact by turn three and four is hyper important, right? If somebody drops a turn one Jace, uh, and you have a negate sitting in your hand after playing your basic island, 
it's very different than if you have a spell pierce sitting in your hand when they cast Black Lotus into Jace on turn one. So it's really important to have that early game interaction. Um, so negate Dovin's Veto. Uh, Disdainful Stroke, I think, couldn't be up here. It really depends on the meta that you're playing against in that round. It's like, are there a lot of big creature decks? If so, this card's very good. Are there a lot of low to the ground people playing Dark Confidants? Then this card's not very good, right? It's just, you have to know your field. Um, Deprive, I'm going to put up here as well. Deprive, the fact that it never scales down in the late game. And then at that point, um, Counter Squall, I think, is just actually, should be above Negate. It's kind of like all three of these cards, all four of these cards really, do very similar things. And it's just like, do you have a big two drop you want to be able to tutor for, like Time Vault? Nope. Okay, well, do you have white? Nope. Do you have black? Nope. Well, okay, then you're stuck with Negate. Like, these are all, like, interesting questions, but it's kind of, you'll know which one of those you want. Similarly, is it Charm? It's just like, if you're in red, you probably want this card, and there's probably not that many other red players that are going to be fighting you for it. So that one falls into this list. Um, Arcane Denial uh, is super controversial. Some people think this card is unplayably bad, and some people think it's, like, the third best counter spell. Um, it counters a card, and it draws you a card, but it draws them too. So you net them a card as far as card advantage goes, but it's a two-mana counter anything that cantrips for you. So by the point that you're late in the game, it can be powerful. Um, I don't particularly love it, so I have it near the bottom of this list, along with Rune Snag and Quench. These are just like bottom-of-the-barrel cards. Like, I almost never want to have to play these cards, but sometimes you get stuck with them. Um, oh, hey, how you doing there? Squall Life? Squall a Life? Uh, disallow. Yeah, Disallow should be on here. Is that not? Yeah, Disallow's in our three mana counter slot. These are, like, necessary evils. Um, oh, here, I can just share this as well, so y'all can, uh, y'all can post this and start yelling at me when I'm, uh, start, like, moving your mouse around in there and pointing out cards that I'm not talking about enough. Uh, here you go. Nope, that's Runestag and Quench. Those aren't cards you care about. Here you go. So if you all want to follow along, that's the spot to do it. Okay. So, Color Hosers. Um, Gainsay is strictly worse than Jace's Defeat, as sad as it is. Um, but they both do very similar things. So, Gainsay, I'm going to pull up because I think it's prettier. Um, oh, they reprinted it. They reprinted it with way worse art. The Plane Shift version. That yeah, looks so cool. I don't know. I just love having, like... I just love having, like, weird dudes arguing as a magic card, right? Like, how is that even a thing? Uh, but yeah, th these are the color hosers. If you're in blue, these are the versions that you may want to play. That We are for sure missing some. There has to be, like, a uh, Unified Will should be on this list, yeah. Unified Will is down here, more situational. Like, even more situational than Envelop and Disrupt. Unified Will gets down here. Um... Okay, so um, there's probably like a counter target green spell, but I'm just not going to, I talked about this already, I'm not going to dig through Scryfall and try to find every single one of these. Um, if I knew I was going to be in a blue counter deck, then I would do that. Uh, and if I'm sitting there live at the table on pick 30 and I know I'm in blue, that's when I start doing that. And like when everyone else is making their picks, this is the stuff you can do, right? You can just be digging through Scryfall, finding the card you know you're missing. And that's why it's useful to have these lists so that these are kind of dummy lists, right? It's just like, oh, it's round it's round 10, and nobody's drafted, everyone forgot about Force of Negation, or everyone forgot about Days. In this last VRD, everyone forgot about Days until round 42, which is just ludicrous, right? That card is way too good to be forgotten that late. So that's why it's important to have this, this list, that way you can kind of offload that mental energy and not have to think about it until later. Okay, X spells. Syncopate, not very good. Power Sync, very good. <laughs> um, let's see. Spell Blast and Spell Burst, I always mix up, so we're going to pull them up. Spell Blast is very bad. This card is, like, incredibly bad. Spell Burst, far better. So Spell Burst is Spell Blast, but it has buyback. Um, still not incredibly strong. Actually, Syncopate's probably better than it. But these cards are... There's probably other versions of the same thing for Syncopate. Um, where it's counter target spell unless they pay X, um, but I, I don't I don't remember any of them off the top of my head. Oh, Glenelandra, good call there, Squall Life. Glenelandra definitely falls down here. Glenelandra Archmage. She is really good and just like, or I guess they. I don't I don't know. It's a group of it's a group of them. 
I think, in the art. Let's pull up one Alondra. No, okay, it's just one of them. Uh, in this art, it looks like a dude. I'm not sure. The Eventide one, I thought... Yeah, okay, Eventide one's definitely female. But this card has a whole bunch of different art. Anyway, uh, Glenn Alondra Archmage is very strong. And that's one of those cards that just, like, if that card gets forgotten and you are in a creature deck, you should be playing it, along with Spellstutter Sprite. Like, both of those cards obviously synergize well together, but they're just both very good. But yeah, good call on that one. Um, these tap-out cards, these are ones that I'm hesitant to even call counter spells. It probably should be, like, combo cards, right? Like, if you're in a combo deck, you want to have something like Mana Short. Um, it's really powerful, uh, and it allows you to get your combo off, but it's not something that, like, a control deck would want, just at all. Um, it's really nice but not something that you really necessarily need. Giga Drows is probably worse than Mana Short. Silence and Orem's Chant are probably better than both of them, though, if you happen to be in white. So we'll just get that mixed around a little bit. Um, there's an argument that some people make that Silence is better than Orem's Chant. Those people are wrong. Uh, silence doesn't say target. Um, that, that's the reason that some people argue. Right, it says all your opponents, so if they have a ley line of sanctity in play, then Orem's Chant feels really bad. But Orem's Chant just has the upside of they can't beat you down with creatures. So, anyway. Reuse. Um, Mission Briefing is way worse than Snapcaster Mage. We don't have things like Yawgmoth's Will on this list, but, I mean, if you're in blue, having these cards is useful. Let's see. Three mana counters. Um, okay, so this is where we start getting into the untested waters, because these cards are cards that don't make the cut very often. Um, but if you know that you're in a heavy counterspell deck, they can be very useful. So I'd put Archmage's Charm up top. It has insane amount of versatility, then Disallow for the same reason. At that point, I think Undermine and then Absorb make this cut. Um, actually, Absorb's probably worse than Counterflux. Counterflux, being uncounterable, is very strong. There's a reason that Dovin's Veto uh, is just such a powerful card. Um... Unwind is not very good. Forbid is very good, though. I think Forbid might actually be better than both of these. I'm going to put Forbid up, because Forbid is just one of those cards that, if you have a way to repeatably gain card advantage, uh, being able to leverage that by having an, a repeatable counterspell just guarantees you lock up the game. Uh, at that point, Dissipate and Dissolve probably make the cut here. Um, I don't know. Dissipate might be worse than Soul Manipulation. No, Soul Manipulation can only hit creatures. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I can justify having soul manipulation higher on my list. At least I know Otto. Um, Otto mentioned it, and I feel bad, but it's got to be above Unwind, though. Unwind is <laughs> Unwind is a card that sometimes you need if the field is all full of counter spells, um, or all full of combo. But it is not a card that you want in a diversified field. All right. So non-blue ranking these is just silly. I'm not even going to bother because if you're in black and you need a counter spell, you have two choices, right? And it's like, do you want to counter a creature or not? Like, you know whether you want Withering Boon or Dash Hopes. It's not like it's... If you're in red and the field has three or more blue players, you should be playing Burnout. This is a card that just is insanely overperforms in this format and people forget about all the time. It is incredibly strong. Um... Guttural Response, if you are in a combo deck that involves green or red, you should probably run Guttural Response. Like, they, they're just, they're, it's silly to rank these cards, because they are just, if you're in that format, you want it. Alright, more situational. Dispersal Shield is pretty bad. Um, this is in, in that realm of, I didn't remember this was a card. Oh, Unsubstantiate, good call. I for, straight up forgot about uh, Unsubstantiate. Unsubstantiate. Where do, where do you want, where do you think you should put this one? Otto, you for you you realized it. You get to pick where it goes. Unsubstantiate. I think I put it in bread and butter. It's kind of a, like in that realm. Um, I think that we, I think unsubstantiate probably beats out. I don't know. Probably beats out negate for me. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It it is straight card disadvantage. So I think that it probably does fall down here. But it's like. It's a good card. I play that card in Modern Storm all the time. It's great. Um, okay. So, Dispersal Shield. This card is obviously good if you have a uh, if you have a Tezzeret in play, but it's just so dang situational. Same thing with Confound. Same thing with Hindering Charm. Like, 
we're kind of in that realm of just weird stuff, right? Flash counter counters is a one mana more expensive to spell. Extinguish, I literally just wrote it down. I don't remember what it does anymore. Counter sorcery, right? So it's it's a one mana extra. Like this card is garbage, right? You have straight up two versions that it cost one full mana less in that plus you have swan song you have negate there's just like so many cards that are way better than extinguish that i probably would take it off my list if y'all weren't watching here um psychic rebuttal i think is very strong if you have a burn player in the meta right it's a card that you almost never run main deck but that is really good uh if you have burn running around your meta so Dispersal Shield, Unified Will I think is even better than these, because if you're in a creature deck, Unified Will is just a good card. Uh, I'm going to move Flash Counter down. No, Flash Counter is uh, Flash Counter is worse than Negate even. So like, then we're kind of like, you probably want Quench and Rune Snag before you want a Flash Counter. Um, but yeah, Hindering Charm and Confound and Extinguish, these are all cards that you almost never want, but it's nice to have on the list. Um, so then creatures. Let's hit this last part, and then I think we're going to finish it up for the night. Um, so of the creatures that counter things, I think Venser is just like, has to be near the top of the list. I don't know if it's at the top yet, but it is for sure up there. Spellstarter Sprite, only costing two is insane. Mystic Snake is up here as well. Um, there's a there's a Mystic Snake that costs four mana. Uh, let's see if we can find it. It's the new one. It's blue, blue, green, green. And I think there's a way... Scryfall, Scryfall has really cool stuff. Um, you, you, green, green. It is a creature. And it says, counter target spell. Frilled Mystic. Frilled Mystic should be on this list somewhere. Frilled Mystic and Plasm, ca plasm Capture, which is a uh, mana drain that gives you mana of any color. So I guess we can put Plasm Capture on this list. Plasm Capture probably goes, I don't know, it's four mana, so it's probably in here. Plasm Capture. I think it's probably better than Rewind. Um, not as good as Dismiss. That's where I'm going to throw it. But if you're in blue-green, like solidly only blue-green, it's not impossible to cast, and it nets you a ton of mana the turn after you cast it. So let's get Plasm Capture listed up here. All right, so Mystic Snake is probably... It's better, just because mana cost, it's better than uh, than the Frilled Mystic, but there are decks where, for, where it will be just not as good. Uh, Stratus Dancer I really like, actually. This card sees a ton of play in EDH for me. Um, it only counters, counters instant sorceries, so you kind of got to know where you need it, but the fact that it flips into a 3-2 flyer is just so strong. Um, okay, so... Disruptive Student, as as much as I love it, just isn't in the same ballpark here. Uh, Stratus Dancer is probably not either. Like, as much as I love it, once again, probably not as good. Uh, Judges Familiar and Mausoleum Wanderer are fine, but kind of, once more, not not in the same ballpark of Spell Starter Sprite. Frilled Mystic is in is in up here. Curse Catcher is for sure up here. Curse Catcher can straight up counter anything, I think. Let me make sure. Curse Catcher. No, it's only instant sorceries. Okay, I'm going to move that down below. Um, down below the Frilled Mystic, even? No, Frilled Mystic costs four. It can't possibly be below that. Yeah, the more I look at this, Mystic Snake is just not good enough. Like, Mystic Snake has a long, proud history, um, but costing four mana is so much in a format where you just can't close things out. I think that it's these two are probably better than air tie. Um, but I don't know. This is like, once again, I, I, when I, when I'm building this list, it's not that I'm building a list that I must pick from the top down. It's that these are kind of the cards that I don't want to forget about. And I want to have them on here so that I can see them, but it's not like I'm going to be, Oh, I'm playing all, uh, I'm playing uh, three other spirits in my deck. I have to take Judge's Familiar over Mausoleum Wanderer because that's what this list says. No, you just take the card that makes sense for you, and um, and keeping them in this list is is a good way to not forget about them. But yeah, so this is this is where I end up. Um, definitely, this list is my personal opinion in this moment right now, uh, and not anything formative or like what is the correct list. It's just kind of 
these are the cards that I don't want to forget about when I am in the middle of a hot draft and Naveen is making fun of me for making bad picks. I just want to like make sure that I have something I can run back and reference to. So this is what I would use when I go and play uh, when I go play VRD and end up in blue. I'll pull up this spreadsheet for sure. So anyway, thanks for all for tuning in. Um, let's see, are there any good magic streams on right now? We can go check out. We can uh, go raid there. I know there's a few of you that are hanging out with us. Thanks for doing that. Um, anyone have any questions while I'm getting ready for this? Is there anything that um, any, anything that you're curious about, excited about? Um, tomorrow, I think we have Alex Worth coming on to talk about counter drafting, which is gonna be pretty fun. It's gonna be at seven central, and he's gonna talk about like how like how you counter pick, when you should, is it actually worthwhile at all? I know that he has very different uh, different opinions than I do on this, so it should be an interesting talk to kind of hear hear somebody else. Um, Talk, uh, someone else talk through their opinions on when you should counter draft. I'm a big fan of taking hate cards very highly, so I that's just kind of where I fall on it. But I know he does not believe that at all, so it'll be cool to see. Um, okay, so Not a Gold is playing uh, Legacy Lands using Modern Horizon cards, and that sounds pretty sweet to me. So let's let's jump over there and raid. Uh, thanks all for hanging out with me. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, just let me know. Let me know if there's any content that you want from this. Um, otherwise, we'll be heading over there. So thanks, everybody, for coming in. And we're going to be heading over in about five seconds. So thanks, all. See ya.